Hello everyone, this is Strawberry Shorty here with a recap and review of Interview with a Vampire Episode 6, Like Angels Put in Hell by God. And I completely forgot about recording this, so hopefully I will remember everything I want to talk about. I made my notes, but you know, it still can be kind of hard to recap these things. But anyway, so if anyone was hoping we'd learn that what happened at the end of last episode wasn't what happened... That's dashed pretty much immediately. We see Louis is really banged up and Claudia is taking care of him. And he kind of implies that his injuries take many months to heal. So I guess vampires don't heal super fast in this version. Or maybe that was never a thing. I feel like it was a thing. They heal super fast in the book I'm writing. Oh, anyway. So we jump back to the present where... Uh, Daniel is getting one of his uh, treatments by by someone. We don't see him at first. And I kind of noticed Louis looks blind. Like, it's the, the vampire eyes make him look totally blind. Does anyone else notice this? Just kind of like an odd aside. The doctor is some guy named Fareed something. I think that's supposed to be a reference because I saw people talking about it on the subreddit. I don't remember who that's supposed to be. All I could think about was that the doctor looked like uh, Stuart Townsend, who played Lestat in Queen of the Damned. I don't know. Did anyone else see it? But So they, they have a part where... Um, I, I completely missed this the first time I was watching, because I was kind of like replaying a little bit back to try and like remember something I made a note of. And Louis asks... Daniel, like, are you still dreaming about when we met? And it's revealed that he does, but he always wakes up right, like, right before uh, Louis asks him back to his apartment for the interview. So that will be relevant later. <laughs> um, they talk a bit about the flying and how it's apparently a gift very few vampires have, unless they're like super ancient. And uh, Daniel asks Louis, like, oh, well, do you have it? And they cut to Louis, like, fallen, and it's like, yeah, no, I don't think he does. And Louis is really adamant. This is not the flying gift. It's the cloud gift. You have to call it that or, you know, he, he, he won't like it. I don't know why he bothers to correct it. It's, it makes more sense to call it flying. Like, what, what if there are no clouds in the sky? Anyway, so we flash back to recovering Louis and he's defending the stat like are we the sum of our worst moments and all that and it's like I mean yeah I guess you can make mistakes and repent or be forgiven I'm very curious what the stat's gonna do to be forgiven for this because <laughs> uh, yeah like people are pointing out like oh their relationship was always toxic but there's a fine line between manipulation and ble beating your partner to a bloody pulp like, one is way more forgivable. And Lestat's apparently left the house because he's he's so ashamed of what he did. And my problem with this is, first of all, no, you, you know, don't give Louis any blood. Try to make sure he heals. Because isn't that supposed to be a thing where, if, you know, you, like, give him your blood because you created him and heals him? Again, maybe I'm misremembering. He doesn't send any letters either, which I also think is weird. Like, or not send, but, like, leave a letter. Because, like, you'd think he'd leave a letter for when he wakes up being like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I almost killed you. Uh, Claudia, once Louis is up and walking around with the help of a cane, again, this seems really weird for vampires, uh, she she lets a goat loose, and uh, poor, not able to properly walk Louis tries to chase the goat to kill it, and fails, goat gets away. I was rooting for the goat, so I'm happy about that. But we don't ever find out what actually happened with the goat. It probably did not make it in the long run, but, you know, we can imagine. And uh, Lestat starts sending gifts to to Louis to try and apologize. He gives, he gives this, like, one really big box. It's supposed to just be some book. I don't remember what the book was supposed to be, but it was a freaking big box. And I just, I love Claudia just glaring at Lestat. And, like, Louis, Lestat's like, oh, you think he could ever forgive me? And then just cuts to... Lestat's coffin just like smashing into the street and breaking and it's a funny scene but all I could think about was this seems really stupid because wouldn't this draw a lot of attention just a, a random coffin falling they're, they're apparently dealing with some harassment I don't know when this is mentioned but the, they keep finding like things on the ground surrounded by like I don't know ash or something 
I don't, I don't really, like, it's supposed to be a warning. It's, it's very confusing. I'm just throwing that in there because I don't remember when the first one happens. Uh, let's see where my notes. Uh, we, we see, uh, we see more, t more of, uh, Louis and Claudia just hanging out and talking. And Claudia's, like, putting forth the idea that Emily Dickinson might be a vampire. Which, you know, I, I suspect that will exist at some point. And it's an interesting theory. Uh, Lestat shows up with a car and gives Louis a car also. And is, is trying to express his, his very sincere remorse for what happened. And uh, I, I, I notice all the stuff he's saying, like, oh, this, this wasn't me, I made a mistake, you know, all this. He says a lot of stuff. You know what he doesn't say? He doesn't apologize. He at no point says he is sorry for what he did. And, like, three years pass... Lestat is still trying, like, sending gifts and whatnot, still trying to get Louis to forgive him. And again, the passage of time in this is so weird. I, I really wish they'd use the narr narration a little bit more, but even then, it, it just, it's very weird. Like, you know there's got to be time skips, but, I don't know, like, waiting around in this house for three years, like, I'd move. <laughs> I just wouldn't want to be around anymore. I, I don't know, did we, did we ever address if Louis still has money? Anyway... Still no apology. I, I noticed this, like, all the stuff that's happening, we get no apologies from Lestat still. Uh, he eventually sends Louis a gift that affects him, which is a record trying to get Louis to come to him. And it's like, oh, Louis, Lestat sung this himself, but I'm like, I don't hear, I just hear female vocals. Which apparently the female vocals was intentional, because apparently that's Antoinette, who uh, Lestat was seeing briefly. So Louis goes to... Uh, Antoinette's house, finds her in bed with the stat. He's furious, d demands that she leave, and she's like, this is my house! And then the stat eventually tells her to leave too. And I'm just like, why don't you guys leave? This is her house. Like, they show her like outside, like, smoking and crying, and it's like, she deserves better than this. And they, they talk about, like, the, the bond that vampires have and whatnot. And how it's apparently strong, I don't know. I, I didn't really feel this vampire bond in this prior to this moment. It just feels like a random thing that suddenly existed. It cut back to Lestat with Claudia and Louis at their house, and he's, he's surprisingly beat up. I don't know what the frick happened. And they're, they're laying out some rules. And uh, one of the rules is like, is about, like, killing Antoinette, and it's just like, why? <laughs> like, th that's supposed to be, like, a whole thing is that Louis doesn't want murder, and it's not like she did anything wrong. Like, she believes they're in an open relationship, so why should she die, and why is Louis okay with this? Like, Louis is all over the place with, him, with his morality. And then Claudia is, is that she's no longer going to be the daughter to Lestat in particular. She's his sister now, because that's considerably more believable. I don't know why they have to be related at all, but whatever. Uh, they, they finally asked the question a lot of people have been wondering on Reddit, which is, did you have anything to do with Paul's death? Because they've agreed that they're not going to lie to each other anymore. They're going to be super honest. And Lestat denies it, which I believe. I don't, I don't think he murdered Paul. I don't think he really has a reason to murder Paul. But I don't, I don't think he did it. And of course, not that he'd admit it, because... I feel like that's something Louis would not forgive. But, like, Lestat tries to claim, like, oh, I'd never hurt anyone you care about. And it's just like, what about Lily? Like, he may have been just kind of using her as a substitute, but, you know, he still killed her. And they, they ask Lestat about how he became a vampire, and he talks about being locked up with all these corpses, many of which were decomposing, and it's like, I bet it smelled horrible. And so uh, Magnus, which is, I believe, who made him in the books, they don't really change much there, like, kept feeding on him. Lestat thought for sure he was going to die. So it's a little sympathetic. Um, and then eventually uh, Magnus just makes him do a vampire, gives him a bunch of money, and then kills himself. Because, yeah, that's a thing. Why does he make Lestat? I don't know. I don't remember if that's ever addressed in the books. It's the most random freaking thing ever. <laughs> just make this dude and then just, just die. Give him a bunch of money. Um, and it, it kind of, during one of their little awkward family moments, it kind of comes out that 
Lestat and Claudia both feel like Louis looks down on them because they hunt humans and he hunts animals, and so he agrees to hunt humans, which, again, it, it feels really weird that this is a thing, because why? And Claudia has a moment where she makes a weird bass sound like a goat, and I have no idea what that's about. But yeah, so Louis is totally fine with murder. Uh, Lestat comes back, gives Claudia a newspaper, which is about Antoinette's death, and wrapped in it is her is her finger, which is super sad, because, she again, she doesn't deserve any of this. And I just found myself thinking, like, I hope she's still alive. Because, you know, this is a vampire story. Because, like, I just, I don't know, I have a feeling, like, maybe she'd get made into a vampire. Uh, Lestat is speaking more French. Uh, things continue to be awkward. And Louis, like, Lestat, Louis is sitting nearby while Lestat and Claudia are playing the most awkward game of chess. And Lestat checkmates Claudia. And Claudia is thinking with, um... You know, she's, she's doing the tel telepathy talk with Louis. And she keeps referring to Lestat sarcastically as Massa, which I guess is supposed to be Master. And again, it's it's the really forced race stuff that they keep pushing that makes me worry about the direction the series is going. And we, we reveal that uh, Louis Lestat, when he wanders off from them, he's with another woman. And I don't remember what Antoinette looks like, so I'm like, is that Antoinette? And yes, it is Antoinette. Antoinette is alive. So I totally called it. And I'm happy she's alive, because again, she really didn't deserve any of that. But it's like, is she supposed to be a vampire? And I'm very unclear on that fact, because she does have bite marks on her neck, but her eyes look normal, which kind of made me realize Lestat's eyes also look normal. Like, it's only Claudia and Louis that have eyes that look vampiric. So, like, what's up with that? Is it because he's older? But I don't, I don't think he's that old in this. And... Like, she she is kind of getting on Lestat's case, because I guess she wants a real relationship with him now. And, like, she she's, like, dead, so she can't sing anymore. I mean, she's not, we, we, it's not a confirmation she's a vampire, but, like, in the eyes of the public, she's dead. He, like, thoroughly faked her death somehow. But he took her real finger, like, that's another thing she's upset about. And it's like, why, why did you take her, you could have killed some random woman and took her finger. Like, they wouldn't have known the difference. But they, they t he takes her real finger for some reason, and it's revealed that uh, Louis and Claudia are outside aware of this, and yeah, they, they decide not to tell Lestat, because they feel like Lestat wanted to be caught. Claudia and Louis continue to talk while they're going into their coffins for the night, even though uh, Louis is uh, with Lestat and engaged in activities. I don't know why he's doing that after learning that he's being cheated on and lied to, but yeah, they're having a real weird conversation. It's like, oh, let's leave on this train. And Louis keeps making excuses. And I, I do kind of feel that during this part, we start to really kind of see how the, the creators get shut out. Because this was something that was like a bit of a thing in the books, where it's like when you would create a vampire you'd be cut off from them because you couldn't like read them and I don't know I don't I never felt like the book really showcased this but I feel like the show does because we're just constantly seeing Louis and Claudia talking while Lestat is not part of that so I, I can kind of get why that would be frustrating especially if you allegedly cared about one of the parts um Lestat wanders off again, leaving Claudia and Louis sitting on a bench. Claudia reveals she speaks a language. I don't know what language it's supposed to be. But she's trying to convince Louis that he needs to leave on the train with her, travel and search other vampires, namely leave Lestat. But he's he continues to make excuses. And he's like, I'll just slow you down. I don't speak the language. And it's like, for crying out loud, Louis, you've been alive all this time doing nothing but reading books. You couldn't learn a language? Especially French, because Lestat's always speaking French. I, th I think it's French. Like, I think, because I think he references speaking French. So maybe that's what Claudia was talking. But he, he tells, he calls Claudia's sister. He's like, you, you don't need me. And it's like, well, maybe she doesn't need you, but she still wants you. And like, saying she doesn't need you, I don't know if that's true, because it's like, oh, you're smart. Well, smart doesn't equal safe. You can be super smart, and it won't necessarily protect you from, from danger. And... 
just my notebook. And we, we learn in back in the present that this is actually where the interview got cut off when it happened before. So apparently they, they're not fully following the book. Because in the book, when Louis attacks Daniel, it's at the end of the book, when he's revealed his whole story. So apparently this is where it actually happened. So we're entering new territory. Daniel doesn't know any of this. And Louis reveals that if Daniel wanted to be a vampire, he'd make him one now. And Rashid has this look on his face, kind of unreadable. And Daniel, however, expresses no interest in being a vampire, which is surprising because he's dying of a terminal illness. But yeah, that's, that's apparently his, his thing. And uh, Louis contemplates suicide, but decides not because he doesn't want to take away from Claudia. Like, this is, this is her moment. This is her escape. And it's like, her escape? Was, was, what was she escaping from? Like, is she a prisoner? Because that was not really something I ever felt while watching this episode. And we, we get a bunch of weird threats. I don't remember who made the weird threats. I just made a notation of it. And uh, Louis returns home to learn about the war. And uh, Lestat reveals, like, oh, thank goodness, Claudia was going to make a trip. But she didn't. And she's here. And so it's like, oh, she's back. Was she forced? Uh, they, they cut back to her on the train. And she's super happy in the baggage compartment that the, uh, the train dude didn't notice her. And he leaves, and then we get a bunch of horrible sounds. And it's like, oh, some uh, murders are happening on the Orient Express. And Lestat comes in, and he's got the dude's head, and he's, he's talking in a weird voice and saying weird stuff. And it's like, yeah, what about that secrecy thing? How many people did you slaughter in this train? Ugh, it's, it's, it's lack of consistency. So Lestat wants Claudia to come back because apparently Louis cares about her and he's in a really delicate state right now. And this scene to me is really, really stupid. First of all, you don't like Claudia. Second of all, you know that Claudia and Louis are talking behind your back. Third, you know, she doesn't want to be there. Uh, she's getting in your way. She's driving a wedge between you and him. And, like, he, he also makes a comment, he made a comment earlier that, like, Claudia's poisoning Louis against him. So, it doesn't make sense to want her back. Plus, it's like, did you ever consider forcing her to return? Might make Louis leave? Because, like, I gotta be honest, first, if I were Louis, I'd have been out of here a long time ago. But when I see he's forced Claudia to come back, that, he, that we actually are prisoners, it would be like, yeah, I'm gonna help her leave now, and I'm gonna go with her this time. Like, he chose you. And Claudia even says, like, he chose you. And... They they just make Lestat so unlikable in this scene because he references like what happened to Claudia in the last episode and he's like I wouldn't do that to you but I'll I'll just kill you and like it's they're probably trying to give a reason for what happens in the books for for Claudia and Louis taking more drastic measures but they're they're going too far and Louis expresses no anger like. Claudia is back by force, and we never see Louis confronting Lestat about this. And then we're having another scene where Claudia is playing check ch chess with Lestat and having a mental talk with Louis. And I'm, I'm sitting there the whole time wondering, is Claudia going to get a checkmate? Is that going to be where this scene goes? Because you could just imagine it. But... Louis, like, I'm starting to think that Louis is afraid of Lestat, that he doesn't want to try leaving because of that. And Claudia reveals she has a secret... And that secret is that she knows Louis wants to kill Lestat. And then she checkmates Lestat. So I caught it again. And she checkmates him and then she just leaves. And L Lestat is ticked because he's like, finish the game. And when she does not finish the game, he throws a complete tantrum, throwing the pieces everywhere. Louis just turns the radio up. Yeah, and then we cut to a scene where I thought this was Bruce at first, because it's a dude with curly hair and, like, a leather jacket walking through a bar. I thought this was Bruce and was like, oh, is he going to die? Or is this going to be a teaser of something? But no, this is apparently young Daniel. And we see him meet young Louis, who has an afro. And seeing Louis in anything casual, casual hairstyles, casual clothes, feels so weird to me. We see that a lot in this episode, but I'm still just picturing him as, like, a fancy aristocratic type in, like, suits and fancy outfits, you know? So, uh, young Daniel and Louis talk, and as you might expect, uh, Daniel gets invited back to Louis's place for an interview 
which I'm just thinking this is how people get murdered because he initially thinks this is a drug deal. And it's like, oh yeah, come to my secret apartment. I have drugs. Like, yeah, that's that's smart. Although, to his credit, Daniel does call it out on being suspicious. But this is apparently referencing the beginning, which I had completely missed that line in the beginning where, you know, I Daniel often dreams of when they met but always wakes up right before this part. And now we see why. Because after they make this agreement, Louis turns and is like, like, hey, do you want to come or something? And he's talking to Rashid, who looks exactly the same as he does in present. And Daniel wakes up stunned, apparently having remembered that he has met Rashid before and Rashid has not aged. And there's, there's like one of the big theories is that uh, Rashid is Armand. And I like one thing about Armand I remember from the books is that he had a real boyish face, which would tie in with Rashid. I have several theories about Rashid. One is that he's the real Louis, and there's body swap stuff going on. Another is that he is somehow Akasha, the Queen of the Damned. <laughs> because they're changing races and genders of a bunch of characters, so Akasha suddenly being a boy, <laughs> pretty boy, would not surprise me. And uh, we get a preview for next week's episode, which is apparently the season finale. Uh, there's a really odd masquerade ball happening, and I think this is when the kill is going to happen. But we'll see where it goes. So that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a comment, and I'll catch you next time. Bye!